What is up, everybody? I gotta look on. I gotta work on that intro uh, on this new program. But uh, what's up, everybody? Thank you so much for being here. I am super excited about this stream uh, for someone myself who has watched Wendy Adelson's police interview way too many times. I'm trying to think how many times. I was thinking hundreds. That's that's an exaggeration. But I've got to be third, probably thirty to forty times I've watched to make all the clips mm -hmm. I do and. You know, I wanted to get an analysis of the words she say because I've made a lot of videos about, but I'm not a professional. I don't really, I, I don't know. I could just tell from what I think that she, and what we know that uh, she is lying. She is lying. Um, so um, on Twitter, I had followed never a truer word, which, by the way, make sure uh, to check him out. His name is Jack. It's at truer, T-R-U-E-R -E underscore word. Uh, but he's on all, all the sites and in the description. And our mods will share his uh, his homepage, which takes you to all his different Instagram, YouTube, um, just a bunch of different sites. So check that out. He Jack runs the Never a Truer Word channel where he looks at statements from people in the news and analyzes their word choices to under under uncover deception and reveal the truth. Away from the channel, Jack has worked with law enforcement, private investigators, journalists, cold case teams, and corporate. HR departments to give them insight into the words used by persons of interest. And who is the person of interest here? Wendy Adelson. So without further ado, here is Jack. How you doing, Jack? Hey, Jay. Good to see you. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Thanks so much for being on. Um, You're welcome. For, for the folks, give us a little back. How did you get into statement analysis? Um, so my career has been in the media for years. Um, I worked as a radio producer and a radio programmer. Um, I've also done advertising and marketing and sales, even a little bit of politics. And those, they all involve using words to persuade people to do something, to get them to take action. Um, and I also was trained as a hypnotherapist. And as I was doing that, I realized I could kind of reverse engineer what I was doing and uh, listen to the words that a, a client was saying more deeply by looking at the tactics they used to talk about their problems and their issues. Sometimes they were fooling themselves with um, things as well, but by li really listening and analyzing what they said, I could you know, do better work for them, um, which sowed the seeds of this idea. So then it's been years of study um, and research and, and applying principles and so on to, to check that they work um, to the point where um, I feel like I'm pretty damn good at it now. Yeah, you are awesome. I love your videos. Me and Shannon both love them. We watch them. Um, just breaking down stuff. Um, you know, Carly Russell was one, you know, Madeline. So and and actually, before I forget, I am actually portaling this. When we end at three, you have a video coming about uh, about uh, Alex Murdoch, right? Yeah, one of your favorite people, I know. Um, <laughs> and um, he's, he's been in court this week and he said sorry again. But I wanted to know, was he really sorry? Spoiler alert, he isn't. Shocking news. Shocking oh, news. Yeah. But I can't wait to see that. So, guys, yeah, three, when this ends, I'm going to shoot you over there. But right now, let us check out Wendy Adelson's police interview. Um, oh, let me let me set this up here. Uh, all right, there we go. So, for folks who don't know, this is the day that Dan Markell was shot. She right now is sitting and waiting for investigator Isom to come in. Uh, and here we go. And you just, uh, Jack, just tell me when you want me to stop and we will uh, go over whatever notes you have. Go. Cool. I can fast forward a little here because. Okay. Did I, just, you? I just listened to my voicemail. What'd you hear? Um, who I just, was your voicemail? Um, it's from Lisa Carey, who is um, my real estate agent or who I had gone with to find um, a house. She just said she was going, driving around town and she heard there was a shooting on Trescott. Yeah, that's what this is about. I'm sorry you had to hear it that way. I'm sorry, I didn't know if I should, I... It's all right, just leave it there. Is it still on? It's right there. And you want to just hit play again for me? Sure. Well, and if there's uh, anything you need, let me know. It just 
it just ran a chill down my spine when I heard that there was um, something going on on Trescott. All right, 212 Hope all is well, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Sorry, you can stop it. Or does it stop automatically? It's done. Okay, do you have your identification with you? By the way, what's, while she pulls out her ID, what's great about this is Jack was not really that familiar I with this case, so sort of, this is uh, all new to him, which is good for him Marco. No. to not have any bias going into a -D -E it, like I have a little L bit of bias about it, just a, just a scotch. There was a shooting at uh, your home or your your ex-husband's home at 2116 Trescott. Okay, um, your husband, your ex-husband, excuse me, Daniel, all right, has been taken to the hospital. Um, he's not going to survive. Oh my God. Okay. get into everything I have to establish where you were and who you were with and so forth okay, okay? and then once we've established all that I can give you more details okay. you understand why I wanted you to come here before I discuss this oh my God. Don't be a judge. <laughs> yep. Go. Oh, go ahead. Uh, so there's been lots of build up there, but there's a couple of things I notice. Uh, number one, she says sorry a lot. Um, now, I haven't had time to prove this or look into it, but um, I was talking to someone last week who said the FBI have a stat that when they're interviewing someone, guilty people will say sorry a lot more in their interview even if they're pretending to be innocent and not necessarily apologizing for the crime or, or whatever they're being interviewed for, but like she does there, sorry for crying. She said sorry earlier on as well, and she will say sorry quite a bit through this, this interview. Uh, the other thing is she uses the phrase, oh my God, a lot. Um, and it's quite often when she says, oh my God, and you'll see it happen, is when she then drops in a new bit of information um, that she's she's not been asked for. So, oh my God, is one of her key phrases she uses. And then this is something to watch for throughout this interview. The detective asks her, um, do you understand why I want to talk to you? And she says, oh my God, she doesn't say, yeah, I get that. Or, or why me? No, I don't understand. You know, I'm, I have nothing to do with me. She just says, oh my God. And really watch for how closely she answers the question that she's asked, because that will tell you where she's sensitive about what it is that she's being asked and trying to avoid and move the conversation on somewhere else. Wow, that's this is so super interesting because now I'm going to, after this, I'm going to watch this with all these. <laughs> oh, there's all more. Right. There's lots more to watch out right for up. with her. All right, let's go, folks. Here we go. <laughs> Can you let me let me get over this hump, okay? Can we do that first? All right. Can you tell me what time you left your house this morning? Yeah, I was there. Um, I didn't leave this morning. I didn't leave until noon. Okay. And oh my God! And I tried to drive up Trescott, and I saw that it was blocked. Uh, it was blocked at some point. At, I'm not sure what time it was blocked. And I just thought, oh, there's maybe some trees down or something. Somebody's oh, you're saying as you drove Upper. down which one of the side roads? When I... Gotcha. 
Um, so she answers that question, what time did you leave the house this morning? And she said, I left about 12, actually. I didn't leave this morning. So she has no sensitivity around that. Um, and actually, the biggest way that people all deceive us is, is actually using the truth. And so it really helps if you can spot when someone's telling the truth, um, because then you can see what they're hiding or what they're missing. So I believe she left about 12 because she answers the question. She was asked fairly directly. Um, then she doesn't, oh, my God. This the, oh, my God, I drove down Trescott. She hasn't been asked where she went by the detective at all. She's introducing this for a reason. It could be just this sudden shock of it, but what? She's heard a voicemail already that there's been a shooting on Trescott. Did she not think at that point, she, I was on that, I was on that street. But here she's like, oh, oh, oh I just remembered I was there. No, don't buy that at all. Um, and that's introduced by the, oh my God. And then listen out for this as we go through the interview. She gives four different reasons as to what she experienced or four different things that she experienced on that street. She contradicts herself or, um, you know, the, the, the contrasts. So I don't believe she just happened to be on that street. She says here, I drove up Tescott and I saw it was blocked. So that's very certain. I saw the street was blocked. You've got an image in your mind, haven't you? If you see a street that's blocked, you, there is a blockage and you can't go any further down it. That's what she says. Um, but then um, when the detective says it was blocked at some point, she says, and I just thought maybe some trees down or something. But she's going to say a few more things as she goes on about what she experienced on the street. And there, now, none of them are the same. She gives four different reasons as we go on. Well, and I can give you a little background. So I've done a whole video on this. She continually. So the street that she's Trescott, the road that that where the where the where the murder happened you cannot see like there's a longer road she basically she well we'll get into it but she tries to say like oh i just stopped and i turn around but in order for her to see the house or to see the tape she had to go very long down trescott and she continually even in the trials she lies about that so it's so interesting like and she says oh my god and she brings it up immediately because right because she knew this was going to be a problem right it, like or she knew that this was going to be something that people looked at in the future you think or yeah right. um so she yeah she she uh, uh and you know i think it's really obvious if you watch this that she's not giving a version of events if you ask me what i did before we did this live eh, about half past four uk time um i put some uh food on to have a meal ate that uh spoke to my other half took the dog for a walk came back looked at my notes so i was fresh for this right but what she's doing is telling you what she did and the reasons why they all happened and the sort of, you know, time stamping things and who she spoke to and so on. So she's setting up an alibi here, um, which uh, she she wasn't, uh, you know, the murderer. We, we know that. So uh, it's actually believable that all these things happened. But what she is doing here is she's this if she's smart and she, you know, is around a lot of law people. Um, this is the the first interview. This is going to be, and I think it is still referred to now in court cases and so on. Uh, so she's setting out right now her stall, but she's doing it because you want to do it really bad. It's really hard to lie. So she gives four reasons why she was on that street or why she stopped turning down that street. And she is a lawyer. I don't know if you know this, but she is a lawyer. So she does yeah, know the yeah. law. <laughs> she spoke about that a bit in this. Oh, right. And it's, uh, it's a, it's a, um, oh my God, what am I even talking about? I needed to buy it's a stock the stock the shelf engagement party and so I went to buy bourbon okay. so I went to drive from my place <laughs> up Trescott to get to ABC liquor and it was blocked so I just turned around I was on the phone at the time I wasn't paying a lot of attention right. um, and I, so I just turned around and drove up the other way I just thought oh sometimes there's when I lived there there were electrical things okay. that would happen um, I left my house around 12.15 because I thought I'll get the bourbon and then I'll get some gas for the car and I need super glue for one of the boys' toys and I was trying to do all I can before meeting my two friends at one. Okay, what, who was at your house this morning? The only person that was at my house this morning was a guy from Best Buy. Because my TV was broken and it's under warranty. Yeah, I think. Right. Oh. Okay, guys. 
she's doing that thing again where she's not just telling you what happened but she's telling you why it happened she's giving you the explanations i thought this the tv was broken she wasn't asked the state of her tv by the detective he said who was at your house this morning it would be enough to say the guy from best buy um right. or i had a tv repairman but she's like yeah, the tv repairman was there because the tv was broken i i don't know jay you obviously know a lot more about this than me but is there any thought with people that the TV repair was organized on that morning to give her uh, an, an alibi or yes. someone who could witness her in the house? Right. So in fact, this is her par the, the code word for the hit was a TV like the, the whole the parents set this up with the brother. The code were like they talk later on after they've been busted by the FBI. And they they talk about being bribed, and they say the TV they 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 have to pay five thousand, and and Don Adelson says the TV's about five k. TV is the code for the hit, right? But I got the impression she, she because she didn't just go who was at your house, um, the TV repairman, right? I got the impression she was laying a story and setting it all out so that um, you know there was a TV man there because it was broken, um, that because that's the thought process that was going on in her head. Um, because if you have a TV repair guy around, you just had a TV repair guy around, the TV's broken, I just had someone around, came around to fix the TV. Whereas she's going, the TV was broken because that's the story that I've made up, and so that's the story that I've got to tell. Absolutely. This is so awesome. Um, also, I was just going to say, also, she said again, with certainty, the road was blocked. Um, I think sometimes electrical things happen. So we've had a falling tree. We've had the road being definitely blocked and the road was blocked and sometimes electrical things happen. So she's given multiple descriptions on this street, but none of them tie together. None of them tally. To work on your TV. I had his name and everything at the house. If you okay. want it, because the boys broke the TV. So. And I'll just say real quick, why? Who gets their TV repairman's name? Like I have his name. Like what do you mean? You, you like you're like you have his name for just you just happen to have that for the detective now, right? I mean, yeah, it's, it's collecting the alibi, isn't it? It's like you know, it's just yeah. He gave me a choice of fixing it or getting a new what, one. What time did he come to the house? He called me at around eight. He was probably there until around ten. Okay. Okay. Um, there, she didn't answer the question. He asks, what time did he come to the house? And she says, he called me at eight and was there till 10. So she doesn't say what time he came to the house. She doesn't answer that question. Later on in the interview, I think she says it was 8.15 that her alarm went off or that he called to say he was on his way. Um, but again, looking at alibi construction, this gives her the biggest possible window that you know this guy was at the house from eight till 10. Really interesting to note as well that so many of these details and her answers change after he's taken her phone because he takes her phone um at some point to download all the information so i think here she's hoping he called me at eight well, it was eight ish and he was there till 10 so that's given me a good two hours accounted for here in this interview um but she doesn't answer the question and that is always a tell that there is something sensitive going on and she'd rather not talk about that thing over there that she's been asked which is what time did he arrive at the house I'd rather talk about what time he called because that gives me a bigger, longer window. And that's so interesting that her story kind of changes once she gives her phone. I never have noticed that. I, now that's another thing I'm going to start. This is awesome. <laughs> you're going to have to watch it for the hundred and first time. <laughs> <laughs> and we're only at seven minutes in, and you've already got I know. so much information. This is so cool. Okay. And then you. And, and then after he left, I um I kept working on a paper, and I. Um, I emailed the paper to a librarian at school to work on some of the citations. Okay. Um, and I don't think I talked to anyone else, but I was just working for an hour or so from the house. I was going to take a shower, but I did it. I ran out of time. I did laundry. Mm. And then I left the house around noon. To go to the liquor okay. store and the stuff for the park. Um, so, um, what we've got, we've got again, she talks about emailing the citations to the library. She's time stamping this stuff, you know, like, so I told you what I did before this live. Um, I didn't tell you about the two boys that um, came over and talked to the dog. You know, oh, there's these two boys that could give you a perfect description of them. That's what I would do if I was trying to build an alibi for what I was doing and prove that that's what I was doing. But she's got the, oh, yeah, I sent the email. So if I sent the email, uh, you know, again, it must have been at my computer. 
And then she says, and I don't think I talked to anyone else. She hasn't mentioned anyone she spoke to at all. She didn't say she spoke to the repair guy at all. So she said, I didn't speak to anyone else. It, it, else, what's she thinking in there? Well, funnily enough, later on in the interview, she says she spoke to Charlie on the phone um, that morning. She hasn't mentioned that in this wow. version of events, uh -huh. but she said, I hadn't talked to anyone else. Uh, so what was she thinking of there? Um, and then she tells us what she didn't do. I was going to take a shower, but I ran out of time. Uh, great tip. You know, like, uh, one of the reasons I do this and one of the reasons I make videos is I want to give people some tips so that you can understand what words that people are using all around you, whether that's family, children, um, relationships um, at work and so on. Um, and when people tell you what they didn't do or they say something in the negative, what they don't feel, it's always really interesting. There's always more going on with that than if some truthful people just come out and tell you what the truth is. When people say things in the negative or tell you what they didn't do, and I can't tell you why she didn't, why she said I, I was going to take a shower but didn't. But the fact that she said it really does interest me. Why do you tell me what you didn't do? Maybe it's just to make that morning feel super busy. I couldn't, I couldn't have been out shooting my ex-husband because I was so super busy. I, I didn't have time to have a shower. But come on. <laughs> when you're talking to your best friend, do you tell them, I didn't have a shower today? <laughs> no. So why right. are you telling a detective in an interview room? That's so great. By the way, uh, we are sh sharing the link here, neveratrueaword.com. Uh, Jack is on, like I said, YouTube. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all the sites, folks. Please make sure to sub up. Party. Yeah. Okay, you went down which road you said? I went down Trescott. Okay. I saw a police car there, and I just thought it was blocked, so I just turned around and drove, um, drove to, uh, I went down the rest of Centerville, went up Benton, took Benton across, went to ABC Liquors, bought the bourbon. I'm a little confused. You're up on, hey. up on Centerville Road. What so there's another description of what, happened, what she saw in Trescott. It was a police car. She's not mentioned this police car before. And then she says, I just thought it's locked. So I, I know exactly the thing that she's getting at there. We've all been in the car and the, the traffic doesn't move and we think the road must be blocked up ahead. But previously she said the road was blocked. It was blocked. I thought it was a tree or something like that. Now it's the police car that she saw and she thought it was blocked. So she turned around. So that she's given many descriptions of what she experienced uh, on Trescott. Very interesting. What's your purpose of driving down Trescott? It's usually the shortcut to get oh, to Monroe. To get to Monroe? I usually take it as a cut through to get to Thomasville or Monroe. Okay, all right, so you... I don't know why I said Monroe. I was thinking Mosaic Monroe, to Thomasville. Okay, so when you come down into town on Centerville... I almost always cut through Trescott. Trescott and just drive by your old house? Well, I, I do it as a way of, like, coming to terms with a divorce. But, yeah, I, sometimes I drive there. If I'm too sad, I drive around. Okay. If the kids aren't home and I know they're not home, I feel better about driving by the house. But yeah, it's shorter and I just usually drive by. It's shorter than going all the way down to Benton. All the way down Centerville and around Benton. It's just right. a shortcut I always took. Okay, so you okay. Um, another reason why I think she's lying about this, Trescott, is um, that he asks her, I'm confused. Uh, by the way, I never knew I could get so much out of someone just describing a journey around some streets in a time, but here we go, right? <laughs> She says, uh, he says, what's your purpose of driving uh, down Trescott? And she says, it's usually the shortcut to get to Monroe. And then she says, I usually take it as a cut through to get to Thomasville. And he says, um, so when you come into town on Centerville, she says, I almost always cut through Trescott. Um, well, I do it as a way of coming to terms with the divorce. Sometimes I drive there. So we've had usually, usually, almost always, sometimes. Once again, she says it's shorter. I usually drive by uh, the house. So she's done usually, usually, sometimes. And then she says all the way down to Centerville and around. It's just a shortcut I always took. So she's like, it's really hard to lie. It's really hard to keep the consistency of your lies going which is when we spot things like that, we go, or I go, mm, what's going on there? I usually do it. I usually do it. Yeah, sometimes I do it, mostly do it. I always do it. Well, they can't all be true. So there has to be a lie going on in there. Uh, any did, did, any thought on the fact that she says I to usually come to, ter to, come to terms mm -hmm. with the divorce? Because 
I don't know if you have a note on that. The only reason I do, I don't know if you do, but if you, because if, uh, you probably don't know this, but she left in the middle of the night when Dan was away, when they divorced, like a couple years before this, she took all the shit. Like she is the one who wanted the divorce. And then all of a sudden she's like, I did that to come as, as a way of coming to terms with the divorce, which is such bullshit. So, but like, I don't know if you, like, if you didn't have that information, if it came. Um, no, um, I mean, just looking at it now, she says, well, I do it as a way of like coming to terms with the divorce, but yeah. So there's so much loose language around that. So as a way of, uh, like, uh, the divorce, but yeah. So she doesn't feel really committed to saying that. So if I was looking at that, I might, I wouldn't go, she's lying just based on that, but I would say she's not committed, um, to what she's saying there when, when she says that, um, around the divorce. Okay. You turned around and went back to Centerville, I take it, yeah. down to Benton, and went to the liquor store down there on Thomasville, yeah. the one at Benton Road? ABC Liquors, it's at, yeah, Benton. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Did you make a purchase there? Yeah. And that was sometime after 12? Probably 12.30. Okay. All right. And I talked to a guy there because I don't really buy much alcohol, and so they wanted bourbon, and I asked the guy. We had a whole conversation about bourbon, and right. my eyes, like... Um, your eyes. He just said your eyes are really blue. Right. And... Her eyes. Her eyes. Well, great blue eyes. Um, but uh, once more, we've just got this description of not just talking to a guy in the liquor store, but why. You know, I don't normally buy bourbons, and therefore that is why I had um, the conversation. And it, she's really, she's not telling us a story now. She's selling us a story. So it's very much that you know, uh, chatty to the guy because of this and he mentioned my eyes because of this um and this is again i think for me perfect um that um she knows if they go and check the liquor store th this did happen i believe this did happen um probably because she walked in and went hi look at me with my eyes i don't buy bourbon can you tell me how to get by bourbon the guy goes oh yeah that's a really popular one and she's going yes great he's now going to remember me coming into the, the store so she's like planting the breadcrumbs there for the detective to go and look at her story and, and, and it will check out. Interestingly, then she talks about being in some other places. So um, she's going to go on and talk about um, filling her car up with gas. And she obviously didn't feel the need to have an interaction with someone there to make that memorable. She thought, it's all right, I've got the bourbon guy, so I don't actually need to walk in the gas station and, uh, you know, get um, verification. Oh, that's that so there. interesting. That's so interesting. So that's that's great. You have contacts? I do. Okay. Um, but I just remembered it. Right. Um, so I bought the bourbon and got some gas on Thomasville and met my friends at Mosaic. Which gas station did you go to on Thomasville? The one that's, um, I always forget the name, but the one that's close to the cross street, it's right next to the Goodwill. Okay. If you're heading north on Thomasville. <laughs> if you're heading north on Thomasville, it's on your right. Okay, just past the Goodwill. Just past the Goodwill. It's close to the intersection there. Okay. All right. And then from that point, you went straight to the. Went to Mosaic. Mosaic restaurant. And met friends there. I used to have kind of a steady Friday meeting, and I hadn't seen my two friends in a while. Um, and so we had made plans to meet up. What, uh, what okay. time did you get to Mosaic? About one. We've got the exact same thing going on there again. I Again, I don't know, but did she plan to meet these friends as some sort of alibi building um, thing? Because she doesn't just say, I met friends. She has to give us the bloody life story of these friends that they used to regularly meet on a Friday. And she decided that this Friday they were going to meet um, again. Um, and once more, it's this story. It's not just saying what happened, but it's saying what happened and why it happened and the backstory behind every single action that she takes. It's not how we usually, how we would expect someone to tell, uh, talk about the events that they've just experienced that morning. I was a little late. We were supposed to meet at one, and I got there a few minutes after. Okay. All right. I know it's cold in here. Okay. I think that's not why. I'm okay. I, I know it's part of it, but 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 um, do you know anybody that would have a beef against your? Ex-husband. He's um. Oh God. I hate to ask it now, but I have to do it now. You understand, right? I understand. Right? I understand. 
Um, he... I mean, he had friends. He was, um, he always meant well, but he would sometimes rub people the wrong way. Okay. Um, but not, not anyone who would do something like this. Any, anybody that he owes money to? No. Okay. He owes money to me. He owes money to you. Okay. <laughs> Got a couple of interesting things there. She doesn't know God again when she's asked, do you know anyone he has beef with? Um, and she doesn't answer the question. Uh, you, so that is a yes, no question. And if someone is asked a yes, no question and the reply doesn't really quickly feature the words yes or no, there's something going on. They're, they're avoiding actually answering that question. And she's asked, uh, you know, do you know anyone that he has beef with? And she says he's, um, oh God. And it's that oh God thing again um, from her. And then she says, I mean, he had friends. And um, one of the things to do when you're analyzing what someone says, um, look at repeated concepts, things they talk about again and again and again. And when she's talking about this shooting all the way through this interview, she talks about it in very close terms. She talks about friends. She talks about her family. She talks about love, as you'll see as we go on. So in her head, she's linking this shooting with someone extremely close to uh, Dan. It doesn't end in what's missing. She never encounters the thought that this was some random robbery or anything like that. And you know, we've heard as much as she's heard at the moment, as far as we know. So we've heard the voicemail message. We've heard all the information the detective's given her and he's given her very little information because obviously he wants to see uh, what, um, uh, she, uh, what she has or if she's going to leak anything out. Um, and instead, she doesn't. It doesn't ever enter her head that it was a robbery gone wrong, or uh, you know, someone with mental health issues, or like you know, a car or like road that. rage or anything that could be uh, yeah, exactly that. Just a rand, yes, random anger. It is. She always talks about it in very, very close terms, um, as we'll see as as we go on. Um, she really, she does uh, talk about it in terms of like. Just basically her language says to her that it's someone close. Not me. Okay, all right. All right. Oh my God, I'm kids. Oh my God. Oh, my God. Well, we're still trying to determine, you know, what happened and how it happened. But he wouldn't do this to himself. Okay. He was a very positive person. Okay. Okay. He... So again, we've got this closeness. So I know a lot of people didn't really love him. Now, who loves or doesn't love? Uh, well, that's closeness, isn't it? That's again, so we've got this thing in her head around the person that did this must have been close. Uh, so I've just seen a point there uh, on the chat. Someone says, not one, not one's frantic of the children's safety. Yes, um, there is. She Look at what's missing. We are how far into the interview? Uh, and Tw she hasn't expressed... Con uh, 12, minutes. Minutes. 12, 12 minutes. 12 minutes, right. Then. No concern for her children's safety. No concern for Dan's well-being at all. Her ex-husband, I, I, they're divorced. But on a human level, no concern for that whatsoever. Look at what's missing. Um, and then... Uh, so um, he said, uh, do you know anyone with beef? Now, he hasn't said, do you know anyone with enough beef to kill or anything like that? He just was asking a general question. She answers, he's got a lot of friends um, and um, people, I know a lot of people didn't love him, um, but I don't know somebody who'd want to do this. And the detective realizes that she's going close, that she thinks anger or beef or not liking him or not loving him is the reason for this. And he says and throws this out um, and says, well, we're still trying to determine how it happened. And I think at this point, she realizes she's dropped a boo-boo here uh, by talking about the fact that this death has been because someone didn't love him or didn't like him or so on. And that's why she then mentions, oh, he wouldn't do this to himself. He was a very positive person. Um, you know, so... Um, oh, so she's, she's kind of red herring. She's going the other yes. way. She yeah, I think she's got, oh, you know, I haven't, nothing has, I haven't actually expressed, I haven't asked what happened, you know, I, I don't know what happened, so 
in this storyline that I'm living, I should know nothing about this right now. And I should be open to the fact that did he do it himself? Did a random person do this? But oh, no, no, no. So, and I think she goes, e, I have to do that. Um, I think she also uses positive person as a way of talking about the new girlfriend and the fact that she wants to say the new girlfriend's um, husband, ex-husband, is maybe someone they should look at. Um, you know, well done, Colombo. <laughs> No, no one that you know of or that he's spoken to recently that that he's had some type of problem with or that he was concerned about? No, no one that he was concerned about. I mean, we've been separated for two years, so I don't know, like, right. you know, if he had something going on, I wouldn't know about it. But, I mean, <laughs> I had lost my voice earlier this week, and so we had put off this conversation about... Um, our son's school and where he was going to go and he um okay Bane, what is that she is asked um uh the, the do you know someone um with some type of problem with them or that he was concerned about and she says me because she says oh no i don't really wouldn't know what was going on in his life and then she says her because she says, I lost my voice earlier this week. Don't know why she's telling us that. And so we put off this conversation about our son's school, where he was going to go. Um, now, I know that is the crux of the matter, I think, that was potentially why the feel the family did this. Um, mm -hmm. But she's, she's literally, realistically, she's been asked, who has a problem big enough with Dan to want to shoot him? And she says, me because we're having this issue around our son's schooling. Wild. I know a lot of people didn't love him, but not anyone who would like hate him. Okay. He, he met well, everyone that knew him okay. knows that he means well, but he's just, he can be a little like argumentative. Right. But not, um, <laughs> He didn't owe anyone money. He didn't do anything except work and take care of his kids. He didn't do, he wasn't involved in anything bad. Quick one here. She's just contradicted what she said earlier when she was asked, um, was there anything going on in his life or anyone he was worried about? She said, I wouldn't know. We've been separated with for two years. We've been divorced for a year. So if there was something going on, I wouldn't know. And now she's saying, um, he didn't do anything except work and take care of his kids. He wasn't involved in anything bad. Again, both can't be true. You cannot have that knowledge and at the same time say, I didn't have that knowledge. I can't believe this is happening. I know. And he was, he, he was a professor at the law school, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, and you, your divorce has been two years or the total separation, I'm assuming? Total separation has been two years. Um, our divorce was finalized last summer around this time. Okay. He has, he wouldn't do this to himself. He has a girlfriend now. Do you know his girlfriend? I met her once in the last couple of weeks. She was visiting. She lives in New York. Okay. Do you know anything about her? I, I know some things about her. Um, she's also a law professor. I know she's recently divorced and she has a son. Um, I don't know if her divorce is final, but I think recently divorced. Um, or is she a law professor at? At um, NYU. Okay. Um, and they seemed very happy. And I mean, I think that was a really good thing in his life. He seemed really happy about it. She came down here, she met the boys, and um, I met her and she told me how great she loved the boys. You know, like it seemed to, it seemed to find. Did she ever stay at the house with him? Just Stop all her. The time. When was that? Do they see the difference when she's telling that story about the girlfriend from all the other really over explained things that she did? That was really straightforward and simple. I had a real clear picture in my head of what she was talking about. There was this girlfriend, she's a professor at NYU. Um, she's um, been seeing him for a while, makes him look really happy, uh, came down and they met. I've got a really clear picture of what's going on there. I believe all of that. And the, just the way her words flow, they're less qualified. There's none of this story selling that was going on with some of the other stuff. Um, and that's kind of 
how I think she tells the truth, which is very, very typical. Uh, is when people are truthful, it's just really straightforward. It's unqualified. Um, it's just, you know, she's talking there about events that happened without explaining them and, you know, over explaining them and telling us why they happened and how they happened and when they happened. Um, and so I think that's how she is truthful, which makes me then even more suspicious of some of the ways she acted earlier on. Um, I remember because I just uh, I just got back from um, being with my family in South Florida. Um, um, uh, sorry. It's okay. Um, You're doing great. I so what date was it? I went with my family. It was my dad's 70th birthday and we went home for it. So his birthday was the 5th. I left Monday the 30th. So she must have come into town Saturday, the evening of the 28th. What month? June. June. This past June. Just, just now. So June 28th. Um, and then... Um, and then I and then she was there with the boys the 29th and then I met her on the morning of the 30th when I picked up the kids um, to take them to South Florida do you know when she left um, I could probably find it um, like in my email and stuff I think she was here for like one more day and then Danny went up to New York because I was with the kids in Miami um, for a good long while I was there. I drove back July 10th, so I was there almost two weeks. Um, and so I think he went up the next day. Okay. Do you know her name? I do. It's um, Amy Adler. Oh my gosh. She's... A D. Um, A D L E R. And she's a professor of law at yeah. NYU? Yeah. What kind of car does she drive? I have no idea. I don't know if she has a car. She lives in New York City. Well, so, I mean, she was driving down. I mean, she was she flew down here, I'm assuming. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you have her phone number? I don't. Okay. Um, I don't know how long they were dating even. Um, it seemed kind of serious if she met the kids, but I, I don't really know. Um, he's been going up to New York for... Um, like conferences and stuff since Lincoln was about um, a few months old. So he's been he's been going up there three and a half years. So I, I my guess was that they might have known each other for a long time, but have been dating. I don't I don't know how long. Well, let me ask okay. you: Does his relationship? Uh, I actually don't. But not noticed this, but it's not highlighted on my sheet. But just looking there, um, she's asked, "Do you have her phone number?" And she says, I don't, and then goes into a long story about um, how long they've been dating, um, how the fact he would go up to New York for three and a half years, all stuff that she wasn't asked for. So it's really important for her to set some kind of scene here. Um, is she trying to suggest that the relationship had been going on a long time behind her back and behind Amy's husband's back? Is that what she's doing there? But she does seem to be throwing things out there because she's asked, do you have a phone number? And what do we get? I don't have the phone number, but I do have a life story to tell you. <laughs> with her have anything to do with Gerald's divorce? No. No, it had nothing to do with uh, no. an extramarital affair or anything? No, but the only thing I'm thinking is Amy, um, I don't know what Amy's whole divorce situation is like, so if you're going to think of someone who's not thrilled with Danny, I don't know how happy her husband or ex-husband is with the situation. You want me to pause it there or keep going? Uh, no, I, th I think that just backs up. Um, you know, she was that was she was leading to that point there. Uh, she did say the only thing I'm thinking is, which is um, when she was telling us about going down to Florida, she was actually letting us in on her thought process a little bit. So she was going, I went for my dad's birthday, so that was that date. So the day I would have left would have been that. And when people let you into their thought process, you know, like thinking out loud, uh, that's really hard to fake uh, thinking out loud. So that's generally a truthful thing. And then here, she's not letting you into a thought process. She's saying, the only thing I'm thinking, really, 
your ex-husband's just been shot, uh, your kids are God knows where, in God knows what state, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, the only thing I'm thinking is Amy's husband. So I think this is that that whole thing around, um, oh, he's been going to New York for quite a while. And, you know, uh, sort of little seed there, I think, was just to throw this, think of Amy's husband. He might not be happy. This interview could have been going, this, uh, this affair could have been going on for, for quite a while. Do you know anything about him? So you know Amy Adler, she's a professor at NYU. She was down here from the end of June through the first part of July. I think just a few days. Right, yeah. as visiting. But he'd been seeing her when he goes to New York on these conference yeah. trips. Yeah, um, well, he's in New York in the summertime. We have an, a week on, week off schedule with the boys. So whenever I have them for a week, he goes up to New York for a week. So he's been spending a lot of time up there. Did he say, did he relate to you that he'd been seeing her up in New York or that's where they met or anything of that nature? He didn't tell me about it, but um, I feel like he was pretty vocal with the girlfriends and people probably since December about her being his girlfriend. So, okay. who, would be, uh, who would be his best friend? Uh, when we were still together, he had two best friends. Neither of them are in Tallahassee. Okay. Um, Oh my god, I'm completely blanking on their last names right now. That's okay. Matt, um, Matt Price, um, that was his best man at our wedding. And Josh Berman, who, um, Matt is in D.C. and Josh is in New York. Um, actually, he has a friend, I don't know if they're so close, but the boys, he and the boys sleep over at their house a lot. They're in Cairo, Georgia. Okay. That's probably his closest friend here. Do you know his name? His name's Alex Greenberg. He's a veterinarian in town, and they've got kids around the same. Do I pause it or keep going? No, 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 keep going. Same age as our kids. He's a vet here in town. Mm-hmm. And I think you know where his close. office is. I I don't. I maybe in Cairo. Oh, he didn't have office in Tallahassee. I don't think so. He he's a vet in Cairo. He's well. Their house is in Cairo. His right. wife is a dentist. I don't know if her practice is in town or in Cairo either. His wife is Maya, M Y A. Okay. <laughs> you're being very helpful. Okay, I know it's hard. I'm trying. I just you're doing. You're can't doing fine. What's happening. You're doing fine. I know it's all the shock. I know it's coming to you all at once. Okay. I don't know who would do this. Okay. Well, well, it appears. From, from what we've seen so far, that someone intentionally hurt Danny. Okay, intentionally. Okay, I don't Do think. You know who it is? No. And I don't what think. What do they come after the boys? I don't think that's going to be. I don't. I, I, I have no indication. First time bringing up the boys, coming after the boys. Yeah. So what are we at? Twenty minutes. Twenty minutes in. Um, uh, the detective says to her, "We think that someone." intentionally hurt him so one person we think that someone intentionally hurt him she says do you know who it is uh, if you watch this five hour um uh whole police interview and situation the amount of time she tries to get information about the investigation um is is quite surprising i've never seen someone do that before but she's very interested in how they found her at the restaurant she's very interested in how they got her car from the restaurant back to the police station she's very very interested in the the internals of the police investigation and do you do you know who it is i think is you know it's actually a really interesting question to ask you know like do you know who did it do you know who it is um and she says what if they come after the boys now that they them is a bit you know that can be you can use they for one person that you don't know very well but she says when he, she's told someone she doesn't say what if that person comes after the boys wow. or what if he comes after the boys she says what if they come after the boys as if it's uh, talking about more than one person an organization or something like that she was definitely not using that <laughs> yes that is <laughs> well I, I thought you, would, you you'll take that one and go with it yeah that I never noticed that. That's so good. Indication at this time that that's a threat. Okay, <laughs> but the boys are going to stay with you. You're, you're not going to back over to Trescott. Okay. No, I don't. I don't live there anymore. I, I know you don't. But the boys are going to stay with you. Okay, and they'll be fine. I don't know if I can take care of them like this. <laughs> All right. Do you? Where?
Where is your closest family at? My family, I actually just talked to my brother this morning. My, my parents are in Coral Springs. Okay. Um, and my brother, I have two brothers, but I'm very close to one of them who is in, um, in Fort Lauderdale. Okay. Right. All right. So everybody's, that's where you're from. So once again, she doesn't answer the question. Uh, she's asked, where's your closest family at? So that's a where question. She was expecting a location of some sort there. And she says, my family, actually, I just talked to my brother this morning. So my parents are in Coral Springs. So for some reason, brother is top of her mind. Um, and that she throws that out without answering the question. And she goes on to say, my brother, that I have two brothers, but I'm very close to one of them who's in Fort Lauderdale. Um, so look, it would be a legitimate answer to where's your closest family at? I'm, the, my closest family is in my brother. He's in Fort Lauderdale. But no, 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 no. She goes, where's your closest family at? Uh, I talked to my brother this morning. Well, that's strange. That's very, very strange. Um, and what's the reason for that? I don't know. I'm not inside her head. Is it just that Charlie is in her mind because he's caused this situation and that is, you know, just the first thing that jumps out of her head? Or is this a little bit of, um, oh, you want someone else to look at as well as Amy's husband, ex-husband? Why, why not think about Charlie too? Subtly. So we got about, eight, uh, I can keep going. You tell me, Jack, we can keep going. Like I, you know, if you have to do anything or if you want to, we can end at three or we can keep going. You tell me what you want I'm, to do. I'm good as long as you are, but uh, don't you have basketball to watch? Nah, I think people want it. This is, this is fascinating. <laughs> people can have it on. I, I think we keep going. I know you have a lot of notes. I mean, we haven't even got to, there's other people that come in and she acts differently with different people. We haven't even got to that yet. And I know you did a lot of, obviously I've done a lot of work doing this. So I want to, let's keep going. Um, thank you so much. Please, guys, please make sure you're following him on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, all the places. This is amazing. So uh, we're going to keep going here, folks. And like, if it, obviously, this is like a eight, a however long interview. We could always <laughs> do a part, part two at some point. But at, at this point, we're going to keep going, folks. So thanks for being here, everyone. Originally, I take it. Yeah. Okay. All right. His family's in Canada. Did they know? Did you tell them? No, they haven't been notified yet. Oh, my yet. God. His parents are going to be devastated. <laughs> okay. This is what I want to do, okay? I'm, I'm, this is what happened. Okay. Daniel's been shot. Okay. And we have to find out why and who did this. Can you help with that? I will try. Okay. What I what I want to do right now to try to expedite things, okay, but I need your permission, is I want to take your cell phone and download all the information out of it. Do sure. You have, do you have a problem with that? No. Okay. And then we're going to make arrangements for you to, to get the kids or we'll get the kids somehow, okay? Because the kids are at daycare, right? Yeah. And, and you're, they're going to need their mother. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Can you do that? Yes. Okay. I got to get a form for you to sign, and then I'm going to get the phone started. Okay? Oh, my God. I have a lot of friends. I know. How do you know that? Well, you had two of them. That's such a weird. I, I'm not an, an analyst. But like, I have. Thanks, Wendy. You have a lot of friends. Cool. <laughs> well, it's, it's look what what came before. I have a lot of friends. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, is like oh, this oh. key phrase that she uses, um, especially when she's going to chuck something out there to the detective. So it's oh my god. I've just realized I've got a lot of friends, um, and once more. Uh, um, she's going to go on and say, well, what if one of these friends um, knew how badly Dan treated me, so arranged uh, for this murder to happen? Uh, so once more, so the concept of why this happened in her head is close to her, uh, or, you know, very, very close to her. Um, and, and the detective says, I know. And she's like, how do you know that? Once again, interested, really interested in the uh, process of this investigation and trying to get from the detective how much he actually knows about her. There for a last minute lunch oh, wow. date, right? Oh, good. Last minute. Well, I, I mean, that you you went up there. You're sitting with them. 
you had friends. I do. What I meant by it is that Danny didn't treat me very well. And okay. I'm so scared that maybe someone did this. Not because they hate Danny, but because they thought this was good somehow. Oh, are you saying that you think maybe one of your friends would have done something Who like this? Who would do this? I don't know. No. That's why I'm... Uh, first thing I noticed there is that she's talking about the shooting of her ex-husband as this. So she's downplaying the crime that's happened, um, which we see guilty people do quite a lot. Uh, the, the example I like to use is that if someone steals money um, from a till, if you ask them, did you steal that money? They may say something like, I didn't take it. And they've downplayed steal to take. Um, and here she's talking about the shooting as this. Can be shorthand, but she's always talking about the shooting as this. She's downplaying um, the severity of what happened. And once more, throwing friends under the bus. That's why you're here, and that's why we're talking. Would you ever ask someone to do something like this? Not in a million years. Okay. A yes, no question. Would you ask, would you ever ask someone to do something like this? No, I wouldn't. Yes, I would. And she doesn't say yes or no. She just says not in a million years, which is uh, turning the severity of it up to 11, if you like. A no would do. You can't, you know, would, would you do something like this? Or would you ask someone to do something like this? A no would do. No just covers it off entirely. But for some reason, she wants to be really sure that he knows she would not do it by turning up the severity and going, never in a million years. Not proof that she did it. Not proof that she's guilty. You have to see lots more repeated stuff from someone. But it, when, when someone doesn't answer a yes, no question and turns the severity up, that's a data point I'm very interested in. Do you think someone would do this for your benefit without asking you? No. What good does it serve? I made my brother, um, the one, his name is Charlie, the one I'm really close to, he makes a lot of jokes in bad taste, and it was a joke he made. He bought the TV for me this morning that got broken, and I was talking to him about whether it made sense to pay to fix it or whether... I should get a new one, and it was always his joke that, like, he knew Danny treated me badly, and it was always his joke. He said, I, I, you know, I looked into hiring a hitman, and it was cheaper to get you this TV, so oh. instead I got you this TV. Okay. Um, I mean, he would never. <laughs> he's my big brother, and he's been taking care of me since I was little, but he would never. And I, I said, I told that to the repair guy this morning. Right. That's okay. I said, he asked me how much it cost, and I said I didn't know because it was a gift because my brother said it was cheaper than a hitman. It was my divorce present. Okay. It's such a horrible thing to say. I'm so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I feel like I'm just going to pause. I feel like I'm learning from you here because the question was, what good does it serve? And then this whole entire thing about her brother and the TV again. That was not yep. the question. Correct. Um, <laughs> but also, um, she started by saying, I made, and then she stops and she restarts the sentence. My brother, the one whose name is Charlie, the one I'm close to, he makes a lot of jokes in bad taste. But she was going to start off saying she did something I made. What was it she was going to say? Did this hitman joke actually come from her and not Charlie? I don't know. But she started to say I made and then goes on to put it all on Charlie. Another thing that would make me think that she may be the originator of the hitman joke is she apologizes for it. She says it's such a horrible thing to say. I'm so sorry. Well, your brother said it in your storytelling there. So why are you apologizing for it? And once more, she then throws in some more. Even if my family, even my family who felt like I'd been mistreated would never do something like this, never. Again, it's the only thing in her head is that someone close to her is responsible for the, for, for what happened to Dan. But even my family who felt like I had been mistreated would never do something like this, never. 
<laughs> well, it's been, you guys have been divorced for over a year. Has there been any type of abuse in that time? Of him towards me? Yeah. No, no, it's, um, he's litigious and we have an ongoing case because the house, it shouldn't be, I don't know, it shouldn't be in my name anymore, but um, when we got, when we, when we settled the case of our divorce, he said, our, one of the agreements the court said was Danny wanted to stay in the house. They said, you can have the house, but you need to pay her half of the amount of what the house is worth. And he agreed to it, and then months passed, and he just never paid me. Okay. And so we have ongoing litigation um, where he, um, I filed a motion in the court to have him pay me what he said he would, and he filed a counter motion for sanctions against my attorney because he thought that she did something wrong, which she didn't. Um, but so, I mean, she, you know, she withdrew from the case and was going to serve as a witness. I mean, she's not, she's not going to lash out at him for it. She's using the legal process right. to do it. So um, much detail. You know, Boring. My parents are, you know, very angry towards him. Um, but even when they're around my kids, they would never say a bad word about my kid's sure. father. They're right. really, really careful about that. They just like him, but they know he's the father of my kids. They would never, they would never do that. Right. I don't know who would be angry enough with him. Well, that's what I have to find out. Right. To do something like this. She's got that thing going on again where she's throwing it to her family. Um, and um, whether that is a deliberate tactic of here's a suspect I think you should look at um, and there's almost something sly about the way she does it because um, she wasn't asked about that um, but she does decides to say oh by the way my parents were really angry they disliked him she said and then she finishes that off by saying I don't know who would be angry enough how does she know what enough anger is and why did she think anger was what would what had caused Dan's shooting? She still oh, hasn't been oh, told what was there. But she, you know, I'm really from, and we've seen this time and time and time again from her. She believes that, or knows that the shooting of Dan was um, very close to her. Um, it involved friends and, and love, um, and anger was the cause of it. Now I, I know you're not a, a body language analyst, but I, I, just watching this, do you, like, and I from watching her in this and her testimony, certain times she's always does these weird hand movements. I don't know if you've noticed that, but that to me, like, it, it's, it, I don't know, it's just no. The one thing I did notice, which is more behavioral than words, is um, throughout this um, five-hour thing, uh, she interacts with she she plays three different characters. Um, which makes me think she's a bit of a manipulator because when she's talking to the detective like we're looking at now, she is um, helpful, uh, subservient and sobs and, you know, um, and, you know, just, you know, trying my very best to help you by giving you every little bit of information I can give you. Then she has to deal with a victim advocate for a while and she tries to set herself up on the level of this victim advocate, you know, hey, that's like, I've got a skirt like that. And and she lightens considerably from how she's talking to the detective. And she's actually trying to manipulate the victim advocate to um, find out information of what's happening out there in the, you know, in the, 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 the room outside where they're starting to investigate the murder of Dan. Um, and also, I think maybe get the the victim advocate to advocate on her behalf. Oh, she seems like a nice woman. She said, "I look great and have a nice skirt." You know, that she can't be a murderer. Um, and then her friend comes in at some point, and she then plays a completely different role again with this friend. And she really wants to be seen to do the right thing. As you've, you know, we've seen what twenty odd minutes now, and she hasn't wanted to be seen to do the right thing. But all of a sudden, when her friend shows up. She thinks it's really important that there's a rabbi at the hospital for Dan because he was very religious and would have appreciated that. And, uh, you know, all this care and concern around the way the boys are handled and so on. You know, the detective has said to her already, you know, and you can go and get the boys there at daycare. And she doesn't go, can I, how soon can I do that? Uh, how quickly can I go and get my kids and hold them safe because their dad's just been shot? An event that will traumatize them for all their lives. No, she's sitting there going, yeah, so Charlie made this gag about a hit man, which is really bad taste. This is great. Um, 
The brother that you're real close to, I have to do a lot of elimination at the same time. The brother that you're really close to, the one that joked about the TV and everything, what'd you say his name was? Charlie. Charlie, and he's in Fort Lauderdale? Yeah. Okay. Tell me what kind of car he has. He has like five cars. Can't tell me all of them. He drives a, he's in think one of them is an unmarked police car. Oh, really? He's a bit of a character. Okay. So I don't know what he's driving at the time. Right. But I'll tell you, he is a, he's a periodontist and he has this practice where he works from early in the morning till late at night. So if you ever wanted to find his whereabouts, he's working all day long okay. and until early in the morning till late at night and always driving to a different office working. Oh, he, he goes to different offices? Yeah, he works in different offices all over South Florida, does implants for people, and he works really hard all the time. He has a girlfriend, so he's pretty much accounted for all the Charlie, time. Charlie, was that his first name? Right. No, first name. He's pretty much accounted for at, oops, all the time, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, in case you didn't get the message, Charlie's very busy um, and has lots of, of things on, which is um, a resume statement. It's what a great guy Charlie is, and here's how hard he works. Um, and he's got a girlfriend, so he's got a girlfriend who couldn't be a murderer. That's obviously how you know these things work. But really interesting, the detective asked her what kind of car. Um, Charlie has. Um, now, from all that, the correct answer was Charlie has five cars. Yeah. Uh, what she says is, I don't know what he was driving at the time. Why? You, you weren't asked what he was driving at the time. Is it in your head that there was a car spotted or something like that and you're wanting to cancel him out or, or whatever it is? But I don't know what he was driving at the time. Another thing I'll, t I'll let you know about the cars is so he has like a Ferrari and in the trial, she can't admit that she, like the, the prosecutor, like he has nice cars. He has a Ferrari, right? She's like, I don't know what kind of car he has. She won't admit it. Like she can't admit that like he has a Ferrari. Like it's it's another thing that comes up later in the trials. Like she she like it's a, such a simple thing to just say, yes, he, he had a Ferrari. But she won't admit it in the trial. It's wild. She does not like yes, no questions. No, she doesn't. I think Charles is his legal name. No, one, no one calls him that. What's his last name? Adelson. What's his middle? Um, J. J A Y. Same spelling. A D E L S O N. Yeah. Okay. Oh my god. What? What? Oh my god. What? Bam! Two oh my gods in a row there. Two all the oh my gods, and the next thing she's going on to say um, is, "I can't believe this is happening," which she said a few times during this interview. Um, that's subtly different from "I can't believe this has happened." Um, so, really, what we're here for is an event that has happened in the past, which is the shooting of her ex-husband. Um, and so, what is happening right now is that she's helping the police, or or the appearances, she's helping the police. Um, give as much information of that um, as possible to solve um, and maybe work out who it is that, that shot her husband. That's what's happening. So is that what she can't believe is happening? Is you know there is no oh my god I can't believe this has happened to Dan in in past tense. This you know the the shooting is the big traumatic thing that happened um, a couple of hours before this, but she's happening in the present tense. So uh, potentially she's just feeling really stressed right now about having to navigate her way through this conversation. This is okay. All right. Let me let me go get the form for the phone. Do I do I need to um, be read my Miranda rights or something? If you're gonna look at my phone, I can read your Miranda if you want to hear I that. No, I'm just trying to make sure. Be I have no reason. I have no reason at this point to suspect you in this okay. incident. Okay. I couldn't tell from the way you were talking to me in the car if I was a suspect. Well, no, and the reason was I didn't want it to get into everything until we got up here. Is okay. he still in the hospital? He's at the hospital, yes. Yes. Got another thing for you? Yes. So, uh, this... I cannot tell you how much time I've spent on this this week. You know, to do a deep analysis takes a lot of time and I keep spotting things and I keep spotting things and then I'll bring someone else in and get them to watch the video and they'll spot some other things. I've just spotted another one, um, which is every time he says he's going to get the forms to um, get the phone, she throws in something to delay that happening. Earlier on, he said, I've got to get a form for you to sign um, and then I'm going to get the phone started. Okay. And she says, Oh my God, I have a lot of friends. And then we go into the friends story. 
So that's delaying getting this form to get the phone signed. Um, and we have that again um, where he says, all right, let me go and get the form for the phone. And she talks about Miranda rights and she delays again this um, going to get the, the forms for the phone. So interesting. Yes. And nobody knows he's there. Well, you know now, and while I'm going to get this phone taken care of, I'm going to have a victim advocate come in here, <laughs> and hopefully you can supply her with his parents. Oh, I'm God. <laughs> I'm assuming his parents would be his next of kin. Um, he's a sister he's really close with. Where is she? They're all in Canada. He's Canadian. Okay. All right. They live in Canada. They all live in Canada. Okay. His family is all in Canada. Okay. They're going to think I did it. No, uh, now, just don't jump to conclusions on that. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't believe this is happening. All right. Let me go get the form for the phone, okay? <laughs> Man, I, I really didn't realize how many times she says, "Oh my God." <laughs> I didn't. Yeah. Um, and that's. I think that's really it for that first part um, of the interview. Um, uh, but once again, she's thrown herself in there as a suspect by going, "They're going to think it was me," um, which is, I, I don't think she's so cunning and manipulative that there was not stress for her in that situation. You know, I don't think for a second, I, I think that there is certainly a lot of drama being added um, by her with all these, oh my God, I've got friends. But, you know, I, it would take something really special for there not to be any stress um, there. And when we're stressed, that's when things just come flying out of our mind that hasn't, hasn't gone through that filter where we, you know, think, What's the right thing to say in this situation? Um, and they're going to think it was me. Um, you look at that. That's the first part of that police interview. Um, and, you know, I, hopefully that detective guy is going, man, she thinks this is really close to home. So is there like a certain part you want me to like a other like there's like a time step you want me to go to you want me to keep going from here like um, you, I have I, I I think this is a good place um to to go there's the first part of the interview um I, I'm more than happy to come back for a second part I haven't oh yeah that'll be great some of the other bits that I've I've noticed if you'll have me I mean, I'm inviting oh, myself into your house I very no much no 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 are you kidding me everyone I don't know if let me put up the chat here so we could see it together people are absolutely loving this uh folks. Let, Please, guys, make sure again that you are subscribing to Never a True Word. This has been amazing, and and I appreciate. I know you must have put a ton of work into this. Um, so yeah, we could definitely do another one whenever you want to. Um, absolutely, this has been this has been great. Brilliant. No, I'm I'm, I'm more than happy to do that, and then we can go on and do the court's appearance. Yes, that then we could um, we could do that. That's a whole nother thing. Let me tell you. Jay said to me last week. Do you know about this trial? Would you like to do something? And I uh, genuinely went to him. Oh, I know that was Wendy, the one that got arrested fleeing the country. I know the story. And Jay was like, "No, no, no." It, actually, <laughs> that's, that's not, her that, mom. That's someone else. That's that. That's another part of the story. I was like, "Oh, nah, I really don't know enough about this." Um, but having looked at it, I'm now finding it absolutely fascinating. And I've got you know the what fascinates me now is knowing that uh, she. I, as far as I know, I, is there any thought of her being um, charged or tried or, or anything like that? Because well, that seems really slippery. That's the whole thing. I mean, my whole thing is I I think they have enough, but I'm not a lawyer. So like, but like, just the fact that she drove by the she drives by the crime scene that morning. She drives by the crime scene. She had motive to move. She she never. By the way, so the whole deal was that, like you said, you she brings it up. There was they had a they had a contentious divorce. And she wants to live in Miami now. He where they are now is is like eight hours north of there. So like the whole thing is, so after the the murder happens, she packs a bag, and she never comes. She leaves with her. She never after this interview with the police. She never talks to them again. Her parents. She leaves with her parents. She never comes back to Tallahassee. She she has lived in Miami since then. She has so like. I mean, I think she's that's that's really the question. And I think the prevailing belief is if they got a brother now, her mom is in September. If her mom goes down, she's next. I, I think that's the prevailing. But, you know, but we don't know. Some people think they have enough. Some people don't. 
Yeah, well, I mean, thank you for bringing it into my life because it's a story I am now fascinated by. Well, thank you so much, guys. Please, this is going to end and it's going to take you to the Murdoch video, guys. So check out that video. Oh, yeah. Make sure to like it. He's going to analyze. Uh, again, it's going to be shocking to you that he's lying, but I'm sure we're going to get a lot more analysis <laughs> about why and what he's doing. Well, this has been amazing. Uh, so we'll definitely do another one. Never true a word. Uh, it's in the description if you're on the replay crew. Like, um, like, share, subscribe. Check it out. I'm going to end the stream. It's going to go over to his channel, and we're going to you're going to watch that. And uh, we'll set up another one of these because there's so much more, right? I mean, there's the, the victim's advocate. Like you said, she's three different people, three different parts that she's playing. Um, yeah, I mean, she she basically confesses to the victim's advocate. So there's a um, there's a teaser for the next uh, the next episode. Oh, per and like I had told you, her mom in the past had said, you know, you have to have the performance of your life. It was to get through the divorce, but nonetheless, she has talked to her about performing. So, um, all right, thank you guys so much. I'm gonna end the stream. Please go over to Jack's channel and like it and subscribe, and then we'll schedule the next one. Um, so goodbye, everybody.